about having their great running back George Rogers for another three years. Of course, he is a senior, a strong candidate Heisman Award trophy. We'll see him in the Gator Bowl, Pittsburgh against South Carolina. I want to tell you something quickly, Frank. Hey, that's got great bowl games. That'll be a confrontation between Rogers and Hugh Green, the brilliant defensive end, who's probably the best in the country playing for the Panthers. And then, of course, Missouri-Purdue. That means another look at Mark Herman. Simply incredible. And you know about Herschel Walker by now. Let's get back to the second half. Yeah. Herrera to kick off. You had a look at Ira Matthews. He's dangerous back there, as is Arthur Whittington. Whittington went 90 yards for a TD last week against Cincinnati. Herrera punts it and is taken by Whittington. He's up ended immediately sprawling over the 25 out to the 27 yard line and let's take a look at the activities as they occurred in the first half. All right, you see how overwhelmingly Seattle it was. It was almost unbelievable to watch the paucity of the Oakland offense. Yards passing none. Yards rushing only 56. Seattle 220 to 56. Seattle totally dominant in possession of the football. Now let's see what this Oakland team is made of. First and ten. Oakland at their own 27-yard line. Kenny King, and he runs into trouble. Over on the right side, Bill Gregory was there, along with Manu Tuiasasopo. Harry Dion defensively stays in the ball game for Seattle at left end. Jacob Green, if you were with us in the first half, their rookie sensation, out with a knee injury. down 10. Then Plunkett. 3 of 9 for 12 yards in the first half. Draw play. Kenny King and Kenny King. Picked up there nicely. Defensively, Michael Jackson, the second-year man out of the University of Washington. You remember three years ago against Michigan in the Rose Bowl? Key interception. That's it. That's what saved the game for Upset Washington. of Washington over Michigan. Third down and eight. Quick note, Frank. We showed the graphic. Three of nine for 12 yards for Plunkett. The 12 yards, of course, erased by Sachs. Thus, the no yards passing on the half. the 29-yard line. Oakland trailing 7 to nothing. Plunkett, here comes the pass rush, and Plunkett will go down back at the 23-yard line. The blitzing man, Joe Norman, who comes in against the pass, this time not dropping for coverage, but coming on the blitz. That kid, Joe Norman, whom you just saw make that tackle. All right, Don, pick this up. Well, they had it. See, nobody blocked him. Norman came up. They tried to move out and get him from an offensive guard situation. It didn't work. He made a good move. He's a good active linebacker, Joe Norman is. Second He's a year. good athlete. He could have yeah. played Major League Baseball. Yeah, for the Phillies, they said, wait a minute, they got a third baseman over there named Smith. Yeah, he I found think out it was football. Mike Schmidt, so he <laughs> said, I'll try football. <laughs> Great guy to punt. You're looking at Will Lewis. All things going according to the way Seattle would like them to go. Seattle will have great field position. The gray guy booms a long kick that drives Lewis all the way back to his 20-yard line. Good move by Lewis. And Ray Guy does his thing. Yeah. And a flag goes down as Jeff Barnes takes Will Lewis at the 29-yard line. You know, I'd like to see this again. I don't know if we can, but they're calling this a late hit. I think it was a good call, Howard. That was, uh, they had him down in there. That's where they really try to protect the injuries, and I think it's good. I think it's Mario Salado that, that came in, if I'm not mistaken, number 52. Good move by Lewis to make, get past that first one. You see, he's pretty well down right there, and then here comes the hit, and that's what they're trying to get away from. And I think it's a good call. That's Mario All Salado. right. Personal foul piling on. First down. You say it's a good call, I accept it. Thank you very much. No man has ever studied the rules more fully, learned them more accurately than you. That was a 60-yard right. punt by Ray Guy. The penalty, however, gives the Seahawks the ball just inside their own 44-yard line. Again, they beat by seven. Zorn, play action. Large hit, wide open. Nifty moves, and he's got a blocker in front of him. 
and Lodge is struggling down close to the 35-yard line. First down, Seattle. And this team is playing with an absolute intensity now, and they're beginning just the right way, going right to the attack. All he does, you see that kind of a little slow move off the line, just kind of moved into the open position. He doesn't do much of anything except get open and catch the ball. Isn't that amazing? Love the way he slipped Mike Davis's tackle. Number 36. There he is, originally drafted by Houston, but his coach, Jerry Rome, came to Seattle, and they traded for Houston in Seattle's first year, and he has been spectacular, leading Seattle and receiving for all four years. Steve Largent on first and ten. And banging through is Dan Dorney. The fact that he was originally drafted, Frank, by Houston is another part of this intriguing Rome Largent story because Jerry Rome was originally drafted by Houston and Sonny Werblin traded, no, was originally, Sonny Werblin traded the draft rights to Jerry Rome to Houston. That's the story for Joe Willie Namath. I knew he was in there somewhere, but he wound up playing for Dallas. A gain of four by Dornick. Second down, six. Ball at the 31-yard line. Joe Dapp piled up at the 30-yard line. Gain of a yard. It'll be third down and four. Randy McClanahan in defensively. There's our hero. You can forget about Lynn Swan, the perfect wide receiver who played so brilliantly yesterday. The man now is Herrera. <laughs> down for the four wide receiver offense in. Joe Dat, 43 single setback. Argent, Rabel, Green, and McCollum. The wide receiver offensive set for Seattle. We have an unusual set for him. Joe Dat, flag is down, and Joe Dat struggling for a first down, or at least the yardage for a first down, but again, that flag is down. You got John Matuzak, I believe, got offsides. And it will be first down Seattle. Either that or another illegal formation thing against Seattle. But I think you're right. No, nope. Matuza. Joe Dat, Tom Flores moving down to the 25-yard line. You know, Flores threw six touchdown passes, which is still an Oakland Raider record against Houston. He came out of press. Encroachment refused. First down. There you go. Flores is the kind of guy, he was at Fresno City College, went to the, what was the Dills Day COP, broke all of, or a lot of Eddie LeBaron records, now it's University of the Pacific, been in and out of Oakland, played in Calgary, came back, doing a good job as a head coach in there. Bill yes, Lynn. he is. Yes, sir. First and 10 Seattle, they lead 7 and nothing here in the third quarter. Go it's a block from Dorning. Steps inside and gets good yardage inside the 20 down around the 19. Good block by Dornick out in front of Joe Dad, and Joe Dad read it beautifully. Frank, you hit it. He made good move. As Joe Dad came through and doing a pretty good job on Matuzak. He doesn't know where they're going in there. That was a little jump move coming across some of his own guys. Was finally brought down by Burgess Owens, number 44. Jim Joe Dad. He really does like it up here. He says, I've got a whole new lease on my football life. Up of seven, it'll be second down and three. The ball at the 18 yard line. McCullough up at the top of your screen, wide receiver for Seattle. Darn. Going for McCullough. Drills him perfectly right in front of Lester Hayes. Oh, that was beautiful. That's passing the way Sid Gilman loves it. You go out in that 14 to 17 yard range, you come back a couple of yards, perfect timing pass, hit. Well, that's true, and he's working on a guy named Lester Hayes out of Houston, Texas. From, Who's all pro. And, see, Hayes has terrific position on him, and that ball was well thrown, and the point you made is to come back for the ball. That's what McCollum did. A lot of receivers don't do that. They cut that thing off, go to the sideline, which really cuts down that angle from the quarterback standpoint. Good route. First down, close to the 10-yard line. McCollum a split left. That's Largent now, top of your screen. Largent in motion. And off. Uh, Dorning stacked up at the eight-yard line. I'm, I'm sorry, Frank. I love that Jim Zorn. Did you see the way he handed that ball off? <laughs> I love Matuzak coming in and says, you fooled me the time before. You didn't get me that time, fella. I'm coming in and I'm gonna, I'll stay awake. 
out of Cal Poly at Pomona, originally with the Dallas Cowboys. They cut him loose in 75. He was floating around in 75. Many think that he was floating around down with the Rams. But that's another story. And then he was signed <laughs> the first year. You ought to tell that story. Seattle Seahawks. The Cowboys really wanted to keep him. They had Steve DeBerg then, too. Well, they actually had an injury, and they brought Preston Pearson in and had to get rid of somebody, and Zorn was the guy that left. Second down and eight. Zorn quickly reads it to Dornick. Touchdown. Dornick picking it up and instantly picking up Dornick for the six. That was the first really good drive we've seen all night by either team. He hit it. He got a blitz from the outside. That was Ted Hendricks, number 83, that came in. If Ted Hendricks had not blitzed, this would be his man, Dan Dorning. So since he did, nobody was there to cover Dan. You can live by the blitz, and you often die by the blitz. I've heard that. It's also true. Herrera, conversion, and Seattle out on top, 14 to nothing. Keep in mind, in three of the five games, Seattle has lost. Here in the kingdom this year, they have led going into the fourth quarter. It's not over. From the genius of Datsun. Maxima. Datsun 810 Maxima, a luxury sedan of sheer brilliance. Touch the outside, the inside lights up. So you can scan stereo in digital. This is the first car that speaks to you. Please turn off your lights. Thanks, Maxima. We are Maxima, the new Datsun for the luxury-minded who long to be Datsun driven. There once was a man named Linus who needed a muffler from Midas. When lo and behold, his shocks broke in a hole. And then as fate would have it, his brakes had had it. Then Linus needed more than a muffler from Midas. But he didn't despair. He knew brakes and shocks were there at a price that would be more than fair. The moral of this story is easy to recognize. For mufflers, brakes, and shocks, it pays to Midasize. Seattle moving down the field, as Don mentioned, one of the sustained drives we've seen tonight. Oakland has really been staggering tonight. Surprisingly so, they're on a five-game winning streak. Included in those five wins were victories over San Diego, over the Pittsburgh Steelers. They're down 14 to nothing, with 8.52 remaining in the third quarter. Herrera will kick off. Ira Matthews and Art Whittington deep. And the victory over the Seattle team in Oakland, 33-14. Herrera, this time, bangs it into the end zone, taken by Ira Matthews. Uh, Matthews met. Severely at the 17-yard line by Terry Renniker. Gets out to about the 18. And now we'll see if Oakland can generate something a little more than these drives that they have had thus far tonight. Well, that represents their futility tonight. I don't think I have ever seen an Oakland team so futile on offense. And yet, there are the five consecutive victories. The great play by Plunkett, which has not manifested itself tonight. Maybe Roselle is right. Anybody can beat anybody on any given day. Well, we know one thing. Pete wouldn't lie to us. Actually, it was Burt Bell who said that. No, but Pete adopted it. First and ten. Bucket. Cliff Branch tries to get back in front of defender Keith Simpson. He cannot do so incomplete. Cliff Branch. He's been around for a while. Simpson was back there. You look at Plunkett. Cliff Branch is one of those guys that was one of the real speedsters that came in. Actually, the first Texas high school athlete to ever run a 9-300. Now, that's been a few years ago, but Cliff still is the kind of guy that brings in that blazing speed. He is having a tremendous year, Don. Yeah, came out of Houston, goes to Colorado, comes in here. He's, he's been around for a number of years, but he does have that deep threat that you've got to respect. Second down, 10. That's Branch again, top of your screen. King and King. Oh, that's nice. Bounces off. Dave Brown gets to the outside. Out of bounds at the 
24-yard line. They'll mark it at the 23. You see the ferocity of the way this fired-up Seattle team is hitting. And I'll tell you flatly, I'm not a pass quarterback, but Plunkett made a mistake. Where? He picked the wrong receiver. He had on a this man play? open. Yes, on this play, a man open right. Look. In the middle there. Number 30. Well, it's of course, Kenny's open, too. And I think, you know, when you go to Van Egan, Van Egan has been there for a while, but you really want to try to get the ball to Kenny King because he does have that speed we've been talking about. Except that he was double covered. There were a free safety was there down. to help out. Third down, six. Three wide receivers in for Oakland. Pressure on Plunkett, and he has to turn it loose, and he does so to Arthur Whittington. Whittington will be short of the first down. Bill Cook defensively was pressuring Plunkett. And the Seattle defender is slow to get up. Now, on his feet, number 55, Michael Jackson, and the crowd roars their approval for their defensive unit. I've been very impressed with the Seattle defense, which... I was told and led to black. Actually, look at the stats. They haven't really been that effective all year, but they certainly are aggressive. I'll say that. They've been hitting a lot. They've been 12th in their conference through 10 games. And doing a good job tonight, though, Jake. They are. Ray Guy to hit. Will Lewis settles in, and he settles in way back, <laughs> close to his 25-yard line. Lots of respect for Ray Guy. Ray Guy, he'll run it out, and he'll get the first yeah, down. He's yeah. is all the way down to the 49-yard line of Seattle, and he shocked everyone. We but told you earlier, this guy is the third-string quarterback. He's a great athlete. Look at it again, Don. Well, Howard, look at I me. Mean, this guy doesn't run like a kicker, doesn't run like a quarterback. He runs like a heck of a good athlete that can pick him up and put him down. He is a good athlete. He sure is. <laughs> and I think this was designed all the way along. He was trying to get a little fake to the inside to get to the outside. <laughs> so he said, look, we saw Herrera in the first half. Let me show you something here in the second half. I got some moves, too. Now it's a football game. Bucket on first down. Wide open Chandler. Oh, yeah. Picks out Chandler, and Chandler gets inside the 20-yard line of Seattle. Very good throw, too. Flag goes down. Late hit. Must be against Michael Jackson. He's the guy that's doing the tug off. Yeah, Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson is really exercised. He's going to get a personal foul. Plunkett threw a good ball that time. He had some time to throw. Looked him off to the left. Came to Chandler. See if we can pick up what the personal foul was. They're calling it on uh, Michael Jackson, who defense 55, personal foul, first down. Well, if, if he's going to do it, he didn't do it very badly, but they're still <laughs> calling it before getting in there late. Well, I thought it was a perfectly proper call. I said, now we'll see what Oakland is made of, and it was Seattle who scored. Now we'll see what Oakland is made of. Frank told it like it was. The game is far from over. I think that was a questionable call myself. Very definitely. He'll throw the football, Whittington will. If he can get behind this pickup here, we'll score. He's got it. Look out. Touchdown. Arthur Whittington was going out on the option to the right. Circled back. It was almost like he was running on a punt. Picked up a picket line of blockers into the end zone. Folks in Quero, Texas will be happy tonight, and so will the old ponies of SMU. Now, they've worked on this play for weeks at a time. It's <laughs> called a fake halfback option pass. Go to the right, stop, and run back to the left. What a weird game. Yeah, Chandler threw a really strong block right there to break him. <laughs> <laughs> now we're getting the scoring we expected in the beginning. <laughs> Go get him, Arthur. Chris Barr on for the conversion. And Oakland is on the scoreboard. You're racing there. Zero. 7.03 remaining in the third quarter as the youngster from SMU has put <laughs> Oakland on the scoreboard. We'll be back. 14 to 7. Chris Barr to kick. Deep is Jesse Green. And Jesse Green will take it one yard in the end zone. 
appears to be fired up. Ray Guy running out of punt formation for a 24-yard pickup. Plunkett promptly hit Bob Chandler across the middle for another first down, a roughing penalty, and Arthur Whittington turned the corner, saw nothing going for the option pass, went back to the left into the end zone, and the Oakland Raiders are within seven. How much of the Ray Guy run in your view, Frank, was done by design? His ability to read the defense? I think that's how he determines whether he's going to go or not. On first and ten, Zorn gets the screen off to the tight end, John Sawyer. That was set up nicely. Sawyer pulling ahead about a yard short of a first down. Mike Davis tripping him up. Pass to it. Sawyer's had a good year for Seattle. He missed all of last season with a hamstring pull. <laughs> he was with the Oilers. You'll remember he was with the Oilers, the kid from Baker, Louisiana. <laughs> all of a sudden, the Oilers have other tight ends and a two tight end offense, and this kid's found the home here. Is it Baker, Louisiana, or Mississippi? Where's he for? Louisiana. 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 Second down, less than a yard. Is Jodat. Jodat has the first down after the 30 yard line. Jim Jodat having a big night on the ground for Seattle. That's really a plus for an offensive unit when you can pick up eight or nine yards on a pass to be able to come back and let that offensive line say, look, we've got to have two, three yards. Let's go with the first down. Give it to a guy like Jodat and let him push it out. That's, that's awfully nice. That's how you keep those drives going. You don't have to depend that much on the pass. <laughs> First and 10, 30 yard line, 5 30 remaining in the third quarter. Steve Larkin, top of your screen, wide receiver for Jim Zorn. And Jodak rising up the middle again, gets a couple, it'll be second down and eight. Seattle with a four and six record. They still do not, however, feel they're out of the AFC Western race, probably because so many of these. Divisional teams will meet in divisional games. Frank, you and I were watching the Jack Patera show, and he explained that to the audience. He had it here. all worked out. Yeah, it's like the Seahawks have to play Oakland, they have to play San Diego, they have to play Denver, and he says, now, you know, really, all those statistics, if we beat all these people, they also have to play Dallas, that we can still win it. So he has it all figured out statistically. It still works. Second down and eight. Saw the futility of the offense for Seattle in the late going of game, but I got to the moment ago. Good out. Makes a good move to the inside and gets another first down out over the 40 yard line. Misty piece of running by Jim Jodak. That's just a play. I really believe they're not going to run that often. I think they're running it specifically against this defense because they found a hole there. They're split very wide. They got Jodak uh, set out in a fairly wide halfback position. They just hand it off to him straight away. Look at the split in this line. Matuzak goes to the inside, holes in there. So they're giving it to Joe Dat. You've got a one-on-one block on Rod Martin, and he let that running back, Joe Dak, take his hole. He's going to pick up some yardage. Seattle being urged on by the partisan crowd. Some 64,000 here in the Kingdom of Seattle. to John Sawyer, and they're going to say incomplete. Did you see Cedric Hartman on the sideline pick up the fumble and start toward the goal? <laughs> and a boy, Cedric. <laughs> hey, hey. That, of course, the reference to the proposed Attempted move by the mm -hmm. Oakland Raiders to Los Angeles. The Raiders have fallen off in attendance for the first time in 11 years. They've not been sold out. IRA fans, of course, in Oakland. There's even a threat of a demonstration for our Monday night game that we have there, December 1st, between Denver and Oakland. Fans calling for some of the fans to stay out of the stadium the first five minutes of that game. Second down, 10. Darn. Whoa. <laughs> comes down with it. That's when you know you got it going. It's like last week on the tip pass to Mike Barber. Well, you know what it reminds me of? When I see him throw with his left hand, it reminds me of the things that, you know, the right side of the brain controls the left side of the body. Now, this must mean, of course, that left-handed people are the only ones in their right mind. 
No, that's the way Jerry Rome called the play. <laughs> <laughs> That was left hand, folks. Well, it wasn't a right line. <laughs> Trying to get it larger, he missed it. Bounced up in the air. It actually, it right. That's Dwight Osteen there. Yeah. Bounced up in the air. And fortunately for Seattle, he had Steve Rabel there in position. First and ten, the ball at the 39-yard line oh, of Oakland. And Joe Dad runs into a peck of trouble over the left side. Ball is bobbled. They're saying no, he was down. Ted Hendricks was in there initially, and. Ted Hendricks, well, he is just reads these plays so beautifully. Stepped across the line of scrimmage and turned Joe Dat back to the inside. And there is an injured Seattle Seahawk at the midfield. Frank, it's a very similar defensive play we saw in the first half by Ted Hendricks when they came in there, just not blocking that play. That's a situation that I think when the plays come in from the sideline, this is where it can limit the quarterback a little bit. That play comes in. I don't think he's as likely to change that play as if he had called a play in a huddle and comes up and sees that defense. He missed that defense, and uh, it's Bob Uecker again. Dan Dorning, the injured Seattle Seahawk, will be back in a moment. The University of Washington in the evenings. Teammates, meanwhile, second down and 12. The ball at the 36-yard line of the Oakland Raiders. 14-7, to 7, the Seahawks over Oakland. to Rabel right over the middle. Zorn had to use all of his six foot two to be able to get that ball over the on rushing Oakland Raiders. Rabel had good position that time on Mike Davis on the inside. Mike couldn't do much but come over his shoulder and make the tackle but Rabel worked his way inside. Got between the defensive man and the quarterback and it was drilled in there very effective. Close to the first down and we'll have a measurement. We've talked a lot as we await the measurement about Lodgett, about McCollum, but how about Rabel, Don? Well, Rabel is doing well, but, you know, he really they got a first down there. He missed a couple of passes earlier in the ball game that I thought should have been caught. One of them was a little bit wide. Then one of them hit him right in the middle. So he's the kind of guy, fifth year, as you see from Georgia Tech, who's a good defense, I mean, a good offensive uh, receiver. But he doesn't have that consistent eye hand coordination that a guy like Largent does. <laughs> he, had, he had the big one on the deflection. Well, you know, I had to think about that. Maybe he does come to think about it. Ball inside the 29-yard line. First down and 10. McCullum adjusts at the bottom of your screen. And Larry oh. Vinson, who has replaced Dorney. Piles ahead for a couple of yards. It'll be second and eight, and we are, have been informed that Dorney uh, suffered a possible hit pointer. Look at those stats. Time of possession. Oakland has, relatively speaking, been without the football. And they're only seven points down. That's right. Saw a good shot that play before with Matt Millen, the young quarterback we've spoken of earlier tonight. He really is an enthusiastic fella coming in there from linebacker position, number 55. The 27 yard line mark there, so we'll call it second down and nine. Four man front for the Raiders. This is Brinson and the former Cowboy. It's inside the 21 yard line. Nifty gain by Brinson of about seven, taken there by Rod Martin. Short of the first down by a couple. Big down, and Jack Patera knows it. Big down. Well, it'll be a granddaddy in January. I think that's terrific. He was with the original expansion team down there in Dallas. Played middle linebacker, had a knee injury that first year. Actually, one of the, whew, that was my introduction. When I saw him get his knee hurt. That was a tough one, and that thing really hurt. Third down, a long two. All right at the 21-yard line. Jodak struggles close to a first down in the arms of Mike Davis. He didn't get it. Got a good placement by the official. I think it's still a little bit short, though, Howard. I think you're right. He didn't get it. It'll be fourth down. And the measurement has been called for, but I do believe he is a few inches short of the first down. And Jack Patera saying, hey, how much? They'll get a chance to think it over, make their decision while the yardsticks come out. Well, Frank, I don't think Jack can pull any tricks this time because... He can solidify this game with a field goal. Or close to do that. Four seconds left in the quarter. 
They'll start the clock. <laughs> Herrera is now coaching. <laughs> well, when you're hot, you're hot. <laughs> Has to know if he wants a square out or a zig in. <laughs> <laughs> and they will not. Now they will have more time as that is the end of the third quarter. The score 14 to 7 Seattle. We'll return for the fourth quarter in just a moment. Stay with us. <laughs> Those are the numbers on the year for Efren Herrera, 16 of 23. <laughs> he came to Southern California when he was 16 years old out of La Experiencia, Mexico, near Guadalajara, and attended La Puente High School in La Puente, California. That was it three years ago? He had the run in with Dallas management, and that's when he came to the Seattle Seahawks, and he's been a favorite ever since. Keep in mind, Zorn is the holder. We doubt if we'll see any trickery at this point as we begin the fourth quarter. So I said the time attempt. of four. Yes, sir. <laughs> and Herrera picks up a few more votes. <laughs> On the other hand, they may have wasted them as a wide receiver. <laughs> <laughs> football coming your way 12 o'clock eastern time it'll be a double header the first game of course regional check your local listing for the game in your area michigan ohio state the rose bowl on the line oklahoma nebraska the orange bowl on the line yale at harvard a lot of pride and a lot of prestige a win by yale and they win the ivy league and then game number two a long time meeting between two rivals usc and ucla the trojans of usc battle the ucla bruins and one of college football's great old rivalries and again i'd like to remind all of you that the yale harvard game for those of you planning to attend that game it will begin at 12 35. i wish i could be there frank i'm worried about harvard they've got their quarterback back there are the third quarter stats and still Seattle retains its dominance, though Oakland briefly did explode for a touchdown. The score, 17 to 7. Total yardage, no comparison. Yards passing, and that's the key to the game. It has not been an effective night for Jim Plunkett. Again, we'll remind you, three of the five games Seattle has lost here in the kingdom this year, they have led in the fourth quarter. Deep. Ira Matthews, 43. Art Whittington, who returned 190 yards a week ago against Cincinnati. And Herrera will kick off. <laughs> Getting a lot of air time. Yes, sir. Well, he's actually, that's meditation. Now he knows when we're in a close-up. Ira Matthews will bring it out. Is dancing down the sideline, stays in bounds out to the 27-yard line. Boy, you see some hard licks on those kick return teams, don't you? Those guys coming down full speed, they just bang each other around. Thankfully, I never was good enough athlete to make those teams. Few no shows tonight. The television blackout lift, lift, lifted in the northeastern, northwestern area. I'll get it all out in a moment. Well, it was the northeast and the northwest. 60,480, however, have turned out. Support of their Seattle Seahawks. First and ten. Bucket on first down to the air. Bucket going for Branch. And Dave Brown comes up with an interception, his sixth of the season. Of course, Dave Brown, one of only three players on Seattle from the veteran allocation in 76. He started every game Seattle's ever played. Don't know, don't care how fast Cliff Branch is. He didn't beat Dave Brown. The ball was thrown a long way, but Cliff Branch was never open. Brown had him all the way, had good position inside, made a good interception. And Seattle will have the football when we come back at their own 28-yard line. Jim Pluckett on the bench, being reassured everything's going to be all right. We have plenty of time. We'll get it back for you, but it was a pass that, forget it, ill-advisedly thrown. Dave Brown, great position on Branch all the way. Seattle comes up with the football, first and 10, their own 28-yard line. 14-38 remaining in this game. Margin in motion. Play action by Zorn. Zorn going deep for McCullough. And good defensive play back there was Mike Davis. Right with McCullough all the way. You want the key to this game, but get penalties that we've talked about. 
They have not sacked Jim Zorn tonight. When Oakland crushed Seattle and Oakland, they sacked him five times. McCullough, I think, thought he was interfered with by Dwayne Osteen. Let's see if we can see it. I don't think he was. Dwayne was going for the ball. Both of them playing the ball. You're yep. exactly right. Sure did. Kind of an unusual call both times. We saw Plunkett come out on a first down and go deep. He was intercepted. Zorn comes right back, goes back with a similar sort of pass, trying to get deep, incomplete. That'll give you an idea of Jerry Rome's philosophy of football. Don't sit on it. 17 to 7 lead. Let's go out and get more. Jerry Rome, of course, calling the plays that are signaled in to Jim Zorn. I accuse Rome of doing that because he did get to call his own plays in Dallas. Second down, 10. Larry Brinson. And Brinson to the 33 yard line. In of about five. It'll be third down and five. You saw Hendricks defensively once again with Matt Millen. Frank, you called Plunkett's interception by Brown an ill advised pass. And you put it too gently. Dave Brown is <laughs> well, you did because Dave Brown has missed the stability in that defensive secondary and he's proved it never missing a game since he joined Seattle. He had been a first round draft choice of the Pittsburgh Steelers. They found no place from there because they were loaded with people with Seattle. He's played up to the reason he was drafted first. Raiders up tight defensively on third down and five. Torin trying to change things off. He'll have to use the time. Time has expired and quickly before it does, Zorn calls timeout. So Zorn will drop over to the sidelines, chat with Jack Patera, have a word on the phone, perhaps with Jerry Rohn once again. 13.42 remaining in the game. Jim Zorn, who was sacked, as we've said, five times in the previous open game. Threw five interceptions a week ago, under fire up here, and they love this boy. And I'll tell you, he is really a, quite a kid. He's really got his heart into the community and active in so many charitable events. And one of them, of course, is SIDS SIDS. And that, of course, Sudden Infant Death Syndrome. And he's been very active in it. And I bring that up because this Saturday night, Howard will be in Baltimore for the University of Maryland, the Baltimore Convention Center, where they are putting on quite an affair, not only to bring people aware of what SIDS is all about, sudden infant death syndrome, but also to get people aware that something can be done. More money should be brought in for research. And this man right here, very active in the northwest part of the United States, Jim Zorn. There's Dan Pastorini again. And thank you for mentioning that, Frank, because Jim Zorn and all of the people like him in the world are so terribly important to us. There's no way, no way anyone can ever get over the death of a child. Third down five. Ball at Seattle's 33-yard line. Oakland moves up tight again defensively. Here comes the blitz. Sacked for the first time tonight at the 26 yard line. And the big time to do it. They picked a good time. They actually moved that whole offensive line back there to set up where Zorn was. And, uh, I guess the charge would be led by Matuzak. He was the guy that had Zorn around the ankle. And he got a lot of help from his friends. Willie Jones also in there, the second year man out of Florida State. Thunderfoot Weaver. Ira Matthews is deep for the Open Raiders. And Matthews would like to get a good run back here, get Oakland in good field position. They have been tentative tonight, but they can strike very quickly as we have seen in their past five victories over the past five weeks. It comes Matthews. And Matthews to the 37-yard line, 46-yard punt by Herman Weaver. Hustling down there, Ron Essing. 13 minutes remaining in this game, and Seattle will be back in a moment. Sony introduces the art of what... On first down, this is Kenny King. And King, chased out of bounds by the pursuing defense. He might have got a half a yard. Michael Jackson with that great speed and mobility sliding out there to force King out of bounds. Kenny King, coveted by the Raiders in the draft two years ago, but they didn't have a third-round draft pick, went to Houston in this past offseason. 
the Raiders finally came up with Kenny King when they sent Jack Tatum and a pair of seventh round draft picks to the Houston Oilers who had only run Kenny King three times last year. He's over 600 yards thus far this year for Oakland. Second and ten. Rocket. Ah, oh, hesitates and Manu Tuyasasopo was there defensively. There will be a yard loss. Manu really did close in there in a hurry, didn't he? That was good pursuit by... I'm going to try to say it. No, I don't think I will. Manu Tuyasasopo. Manu Tuyasasopo. First round draft pick a year ago from UCLA, and, and along with Robert Hardy, a tenth round draft pick, they have started every game. Last year, and... This their 11th start of the season. Third down 12. Ball marked inside the 35 yard line. Seahawks coming to life. Good protection. Bucket. Trying to go to Chandler incomplete. Good pressure that time, Frank. Robert Hardy, number 75, and Monday was again in the area. Put good pressure. Jim just tried to force that ball, threw it off the line, and forces a fourth down. Listen to this crowd. This adulation for a team that's four and six on the season. Will Lewis has dropped deep to await the kicker Bray Guy, and I mean Lewis is very deep. And Guy bangs off another beauty. Lewis inside his own 20. And good coverage by the Raiders, and Lewis gets out to the 21-yard line. A 48-yard punt thus far on Ray Guy, who has been having a tremendous night for Oakland. We'll be back in a moment. Intra he won the competition, which was a surprise to everybody, I think, except to Jennings. He said, I knew he had it all the way. Second and seven. Two tight ends are in. 81 is Sawyer, 82 is Mark Bell. Jordan puts it up in the air. And incomplete intended for Sawyer. Sawyer picked up, covered by Burgess Owens, also dropping deep. Another one of those big downs, Frank. Seattle must keep possession of the ball if Oakland is not to have at least an opportunity to get back into the game. The Kingdom shot the top of the ceiling some 250 feet above the playing surface. As I said earlier, frills but certainly a very practical facility and it does rain up here occasionally third down seven Zorn directing traffic and off is to McCutcheon <laughs> that's almost one of those things he's kidding me the other guy where to line up look I'm gonna give you the ball and you're gonna run straight ahead that's almost a trick is there something I said <laughs> Fourth down, and Seattle will have to turn it over. <laughs> Out comes Herman Weaver. Didn't think they'd do that. Well, they're surprising us tonight, aren't they? There is Ira Matthews. As I said, has really not lived up to his great college senior year when he averaged almost seven yards on punt returns for Wisconsin, leading the nation. Weaver, well, he's in trouble. And it's blocked. There you go. It was Ted Hendricks who made the block. And there's a scramble in the end zone. No. They lucked it's out a safety. safety. They got away with the safety as deep as Seattle could get away. It looked like it was going to be six, but there's a flag down at the line of scrimmage. Well, they did luck out because that could have been they, a touchdown very easily. They really did. And once again, the big play, Ted Hendricks. Ineligible receiver downfield on the punt. Refuse safety. Two points racked up for the Oakland Raiders, and they'll get the football back on the free kick from the 20. Well, now it was.
was not a bad snap. You think he's trying to play games? He saw Ray Guy do his number, Herrera do his number. It was Lester Hayes pressuring Weaver and Ted Hendricks with the block. And I don't have the exact numbers, but Hendricks over the years has probably blocked more punts and field goals than any other active linebacker in the game today. I think actually he has, Frank. I don't have the numbers either, but it seems like I read that somewhere. And at six foot seven, you're not going to be too surprised because he does have the long arms to get up there and do it. Tell you another thing about him. He's played in 169 consecutive games. Durable, a brilliant diagnostician on the field. He's been all over the field tonight. And having just another superb year for Oakland. He was a defensive end at the University of Miami in Florida. Baltimore drafted him, translated him into a linebacker. He was the defensive player of the year when the Baltimore Colts won the Super Bowl 16 to 13 over the Dallas Cowboys. He is a great veteran. He's got a nose for the football. He's got a reach that goes to the sky. He makes the big plays. Six foot seven. Ted Hendricks went off to Green Bay for a couple of years before coming to Oakland in 75. And Herman Weaver will put it into play from his own 20 yard line. Ira Matthews and Keith Moody have dropped for the Oakland Raiders. Well, it had to happen. We have all, all had all kinds of action on fourth down here tonight. And this one backfires against Seattle. That flag is down as the Seattle Seahawks appeared to be offside. Keith Moody. Again, the flag is down back at the 20-yard line. They mark the ball until they can talk it over and see whether or not Oakland would like to try another run back, and I'm sure they will. Frank, as we look back at that play, I think Hendricks would have had the football for a touchdown. Kicking team, offside, five-yard penalty, break kick. But just at that moment, a Seattle body came hurtling in, and that moved the football away. Wasn't that number 86 back in the game? Uh, it could well have been. Happy birthday, Thunderfoot. <laughs> I just thought it was Jacob Green back in the game at the most precisely right moment. <laughs> I would say that's true tonight. I like you? that. Yeah. It's not a job, it's an adventure. Herman Weaver now will kick. This time he has to get it off inside the 15 yard line. Again, deep, Keith Moody. And Ira Matthews. Ten eighteen remaining in the game. Score is now seventeen to nine. The Seahawks. Keith Moody. We got some open. And Moody spins his way out over the forty-yard line. Oakland once again good field position. And a touchdown, however, will not do it. Had they been able to recover that football in the end zone, it would have been a little different story, at least in terms of offensive strategy for the Oakland Raiders. You've got to think that's an omen of some sort, since we've mentioned several times tonight, Oakland has lost several games this year in the last quarter, and they have not won here in the Kingdom all year. Seattle. What did I say? Oh. Well, they've never won here. The chance. First down. Bucket to the air on first. Going for Ramsey and off his fingertips. I think Bucket thought that was a well thrown ball. And it did look well thrown. It seemed to me that when Ramsey was running, he just somehow misjudged it a little bit. Didn't get his hands up there. You can see Pluckett back there. He got good protection this time. Set. Made a good throw. You know, we have seen a little oh, bit over uh, Looking for down on the bench. Raymond Chester appears to be all right. That he has seen very little action here in the second half. That's a good point. I don't understand that. He, of course, did a great year a year ago. They kept him, sent Casper to Houston. He's out of the game. Flags are down. 
pocket, just bombing away. This time it's complete, and that's Derek Ramsey. And he's got himself almost a touchdown. They will not take that offside. Oh, they sure won't. And now you see in action why they traded David Casper. As great as David is, they've got Chester, they've got Ramsey, they believe in young Todd Christensen. All the times you see this happen, the defense knows they've committed a foul, they know there's going to be a penalty, there's just a slight hesitation. The ball is well thrown, but man, he is wide open down there. Who in the world is supposed to cover him? It's certainly not going to be that linebacker, that's Michael Jackson. It's not going to be Jackson who's going to cover him all the way. Or maybe it is. If it is, Jackson sure could keep up with it. Oftentimes, double coverage on both outside men will result in a linebacker trying to go all the way with the tight end. But Eric Ramsey, we talked about him earlier, has very fine speed, as does the other tight end, Raymond Chester. Got ourselves a football game. think even the second effort got it for him. The only thing you can save him down here is a fumble. And Tom Flory says just punch it in. Don't fumble. 9.30 and the clock is moving. Remaining in the game. Jim Puckett. Not having a good night, but staying in there. Keeps hammering away and finally got Ramsey to the one. Van Egan. No. No. We'll go bananas over this. Thought he was going to bounce out to the outside and score. Good defensive play from that defensive left side. You can almost see Van Egan. Who are those guys? Less than nine minutes left now. The clock begins to work. 17 to 9. Seahawks in the lead. Three setbacks in now. Kenny King. Van Egan and Derek Jensen. That's Jensen. He'll adjust into a wingback spot. They should go right. Touchdown. Yep. Van Egan. And the Raiders get in from the one on their third effort. A conversion away from a one-point lead now. And Seattle and they, Seattle fans have seen this so often. To a great start. The game it looked like they could almost run away with, and now all of a sudden they're in a dogfight. One gets the feeling that if all games were 55 minutes, Seattle would predominate in the entire league. Once the late Rocky Marciano told me, Don, if all fights were 50 rounds, watch this. This bar brings it to within one. And we have 8.30 remaining in the game. We'll be back. Denver is breathing down them with a 6-5 record. Kansas City at 5-6. Seattle thinks that if they can win tonight and win the rest of their games, that they'll be in the hunt. Jesse Green for Seattle. And Green spinning out to the 20-yard line. Todd Christensen, another tight end who does a lot of things for the Oakland Raiders down there on the stop. Jesse Green, another toss of X. A fellow out of Dallas, Texas. Got a lot of speed. It was Jesse Green who knocked the football away from Hendricks and prevented the touchdown. In the meantime, I was saying the late Rocky Marciano once told me that if all fights were 50 rounds, George Shabala would have been the greatest fighter ever lived. <laughs> First down, 10 Seattle. Slim one point margin. McCutcheon comes up with the ball. Good catch. That was behind him. He had to spin around and get it, and he gets out over the 35, close to the 37, beating Rod Martin. I'm going to guess there was the Rod Martin. Let's take another look at it. You see McCutcheon coming from his fullback position out to that flat. It's kind of an unusual pattern. Usually those backs are set over the halfback position. It was a little bit behind it. Number 53, Rod Martin was the guy that came back to try to make that. Was that Keith Moody, I think, was in there also. No, Mike Davis. Seattle got Lawrence McCutcheon on waivers from Denver three weeks ago. First and ten, the clock stopped at 8.14 remaining in the game. Darn. Rifles it out to Larger. And 
Zorn very carefully had to thread that ball to Larson because the looming hulk of Ted Hendricks was right there. He really was, wasn't he, Frank? He was right in the middle, and Lester Hayes had him pretty well covered from the outside. The ball was perfectly thrown. Take another look at it. Quick little fake to McCutcheon in the middle. Sets, looks downfield, comes back to the outside. There's Hendricks, the rating three. Hayes, number 37, and Largent was in the middle to pick up that reception. Yeah, but don't you have to admire the audacity of Rome's signal calling? Nothing defensive in the play of the Seattle team. They certainly moved the ball well tonight. They just haven't put up a whole lot of points. First and 10, 47-yard line for Seattle. This is McCutcheon and McCutcheon. Barrels to the 48-yard line. Again, a four, it'll be second and six. And we want to remind you, tonight right after, your late local news, ABC News Nightline, explores a murder trial in which an all-white jury in Greensboro, North Carolina, today found four members of the Ku Klux Klan and two members of the American Nazi Party not guilty of murder and rioting charges resulting from the deaths of five members of the Communist Party over a year ago. Nightline looks at the lengthiest murder trial in North Carolina history immediately following your late local news over most of these ABC stations. Second down six. Here comes Larry Benson. And Seattle showing a lot of style. They come roaring back. Benson to the 28-yard line. First down, Seattle. Burgess Owens made the stop. And if Burgess Owens hasn't been there, Benson could have gone all the way. You see a little cutback against the green. Matuzak was late in getting there. Good move to the outside. There's Owens, number 44. Brings it in. He had a good head of steam, Larry Brinson. Well, and a former cowboy, and he was with the Cowboys for three years and only had run for 172 yards during those three years. They've already got field goal position. Margin in motion on first down. Brinson again holding on to that football. If he gets back close to the line of scrimmage, he might lose a half a yard. Good move by Rod Martin that time, number 53, coming into the linebacker position. He was playing over a block of the left tackle, number 72, Lewis Bullard, but he uh, at least slowed him down so he could get some help from his friends on the inside. Seattle has now had 39 rushing plays. Every time... They have had 40 rushing plays in a game. This is their history. They have won the football game. Second down, a little more than 10 to go for the first, and the seconds are ticking off the clock. We're inside five and a half minutes remaining. Quick hand off to McCutcheon, tries to slip through. A simple play where they pull the guard and hope that the tackle will follow him. He did not. <laughs> Ted Hendricks slid over to make the stop. A gain of a couple. It'll be third down and nine. It's a fairly interesting statistic you're talking about that, Howard. They've won every game in which they've rushed 40 times or gained 200 yards rushing. Third down and about nine, maybe a little more than nine. McCutcheon single setback, four wide receivers for Seattle. And Oakland has tended to blitz on this situation. And here they come. Zarn picked off Lester Hayes. His ninth interception of the year. Lester. That ball was deflected, I believe, and Hayes was there. But it was the one mistake, Frank, that Seattle could not afford. It's what they've been doing in the late minutes of every game, because now a field goal can win it for Oakland. He did get the blitz, and here's the thing he's been criticized most for. I don't think he saw Lester Hayes out of Houston and Texas a and I think he didn't see him coming from the other side. Hendricks could have touched it a little bit. I yeah, thought he I did. Maybe he did. I'll tell you one thing. Lester Hayes, the kind of season he's having, that's his 16th interception in less than two years. He is right up there with the best in football today. 39-yard line. The Oakland Raiders down by one. 420 remaining in the game. First down. Inside handoff. Mark Van Egan piled up line of scrimmage, and the crowd is exhorting the defensive unit. The one thing Plunkett can't afford is a mistake. That's Robert Hardy, defensive tackle. Let's go back and look at that play and see if Hendricks got a paw on it. I thought he did. Well, it's hard to tell. 
but no matter if he did touch it a little bit. Yes, yep. he did. Did touch it a little bit. However, I think had Hayes not been there, it could have been complete. Hayes just happened to be in a position to come through from defensive standpoint to pick that one up. If Oakland should win, I give the game ball to Ted Hendricks. Hardy got off the field limping. Defensively, Bill Cook is in there for Hardy. Second down, Tim Puckett wants to go to the air. Eric Ramsey was down there. Dueling with Kerry Justin incomplete. That's Lester Hayes. I don't understand that call, Don. You don't need that kind of yardage. All I have to do is get the field goal position. Well, you can think, you know, back a little while ago, though, Howard, when we were sitting in here and he, he comes to Derek Ramsey down in the middle of that deep goal. I think the thing that Plunkett does have, and this is supposedly with the reason behind getting past Trini, he wanted that real oh, strong long ball. Yeah, and Plunkett can throw a pretty long ball. Third down, 10. Less than four minutes remaining in the game. Oakland has the football, their own 39-yard line. They need to pick up the first down. Awfully big play right here. Bucket can run for it. Oh. He slips, drops the ball. Oakland, I believe, is there, but it'll be short of the first down. Oh, yeah. yeah, but they got to go for it, Giffer. They got to go for it. He hate to see Plunkett drop the ball. He had the opening and probably had a first down. That's right. Now, it's almost embarrassing. I hate to see quarterbacks do that. You know, he does speak well of the trade. Nor did he get good <laughs> placement from the officials on the football, so they got a couple of yards to go. A little more than a couple, and it'll be fourth down. He just stumbled, fumbled, putting and fell right there. They this say. is what you call your basic character builder, this play. <laughs> Showtime right here in the kingdom. Fourth and three. Seconds ticking away. Three minutes remaining in the game. Roll out. Puckett. First down. He got it. And he held it. He said, I learned something on that last run. He tucked the ball in a little closer to you. That was a character builder, wasn't it? He had fumbled three times during the course of the game. Now, as the seconds tick off, two minutes and 30 seconds, Oakland has three timeouts remaining. They also have a very strong-legged place kicker in Chris Barr. He had two over 50 yards last year with Cincinnati, so he can reach it if you get the ball inside the 40. First and 10. Plunkett, Branch, stepping out of bounds, killing the clock, and also picking up eight yards in doing so. Clock stop, 2.08. And we're going to quickly pause five seconds if you can quickly pause five seconds and allow your stations to identify yourselves. You're watching KOMO TV for Seattle. Cliff Branch, his first reception of the night with a gain of eight yards as Oakland moves inexorably closer to field goal range for Chris Barr. Oakland down by one. Again, a win tonight. And they stay one game ahead of the San Diego Chargers in the AFC West. Block it. Fires a dangerous pass out to Bob Chandler. Covering was Curry Justin. Bob Chandler has been kind of a new threat for them. He's a guy that's kind of come back home to the Bay Area. He's a student at law school, high you, school. He just ate Seattle up individually in the first game they played, and Seattle, or rather Oakland, beat them down in Oakland. He had three touchdown passes in that game. He didn't have to pass on that play. He's got enough time. He only needs a yard for the first down. He could have run for the first down. Heading towards a two-minute warning. 2.04 remaining in the game. in motion. Whittington gets to the outside. Kills the clock at the 36-yard line. That's what I mean. First and we'll down. get the two-minute warning. After watching Bradshaw with Swan yesterday and the way they used the clock, 
Oakland has all the time in the world. They just don't have to make a mistake. We'll be back in a moment. Now, four-wheel drive gives you the luxury to go anywhere. Four by four by Datsun. Introducing the 1981 Datsun King Cab. Off-road, its new Napsi engine gives you more power than last year. And with exclusive reclining buckets, optional jump seats, and a sporty five-speed stick, this King Cab takes on the city in high style. Datsun four-wheel driven. Probably no surprise that most automobile accidents are caused by careless drivers. A reckless few who push up. Man sweats more than a woman. That's why a man needs. The story, it was not an artistic success for the Oakland Raiders, and of course it's not over. 56 seconds remain on the clock, and Seattle will have one timeout to work with. Deep is Jesse Green. But it's the kind of a game that a super football team will win when they're playing poorly. And down goes Jesse Green at the 17-yard line. Keith Moody hustling down there for the Oakland Raiders. And now, let's see what Jim Dorn can come up with for the Seattle Seahawks. Well, let me he see. has come up with a lot of things over his short term in the NFL. Excuse me, Frank. You just made a statement that is the whole story if Oakland hangs on to win. Because you prove yourself a good team when you win, when you play poorly. And that's the way the score stands now, and Oakland has not played its game. They, of course, will see Oakland again, December the 1st, in Oakland against Denver. Lawrence McCutcheon, the single setback, and of course, the four wide receivers are in. McCutcheon, he'll try to get out inside. And the flag goes down as McCutcheon steps out of bounds at the 25-yard line. They're going to call clipping, I think, that time. It seemed so, didn't it? Yeah, I think so. I think they got Sam McCullum that time. It looked like. That's a good point, Frank. I think it's the mark of any champion. We saw Pittsburgh do it yesterday against Cleveland. We're seeing Oakland come back. They did not play well. Statistically, they've really lost this game, but they are ahead of the score. And we saw a mistake right there that's going to throw them back. You also, another thing, on that kickoff return, you see a team come down. Any time you can hold a team inside the 20. Here's a clip by McCullum. Oh. <laughs> he, it was not a hard clip, I will say that. So the guy, he might have had his uh, head close to his pocket where the yellow flag was. But in, Personal in foul event. clipping, number 86. Sure, it's First easy down. for you to say. <laughs> that was an in, uh -huh. intended to clip. Yeah, that's right. Intent. First down, 16. 46 seconds. Dribbles it at the 15 incomplete. When you go back to Zorn's interception to Lester Hayes, uh, possibly it was tipped key by mistake. Hendricks, and it was a key mistake. One of the things that Jim is coming under a great deal of criticism here, he had five interceptions a week ago. He had gone four games without any. You see a quarterback, and you measure his success after he's been in the league for a while, and I think by his ratio of number of interceptions to touchdown passes. He does not have as many touchdowns as he does interceptions. Which is a telling statistic. I think it is. It really is. Neither does Plunkett, as a matter of fact. Second down, 16. Look out. Martin was the intended receiver. It was deflected, I believe, by Rod Martin. Almost taken there on the interception by Burgess Owens. Third down, 16. I gotta tell you, Don, if we have to go down there and select who gets the game ball, I go for Hendricks. Uh, yeah, you mentioned that earlier. I think possibly you would have given it to him had he won or had he lost. We might have to he, go for yeah. Ted Hendricks every week. But he, <laughs> he really is. He's Frank. like three people out there. He's the kind of guy that really does seem to make the big play in a lot of different ways. He was also the guy that blocked the punt. That's right. Third down, 16. Burgess Owens is way back at the 40-yard lines. Playing center field. Oh. will go down. John Matuzak pulling in there along with Cedric Hardman. And, of course, Willie Jones, the sack pack, if you will. 
And they've got Zorn all the way back at the two yard line. And these Seahawks and have fourth down. Yet to win one here in the kingdom. Apparently so. 32 seconds left. One timeout left. Fourth down and 20. Let's see. No, more than that. Fourth down and almost 26. Yeah. See there? <laughs> That's well, this say. is where you let the quarterback call his own play. That's right. Pull it out, Jim. And almost picked off out there by Lester Hayes. And that should do it. Eight seconds. So it is over, and we have found out. And the clock is stopped on change of possession, so we'll have to have another play run on the field. Well, we found out what Oakland's made of, Mr. Gifford. I've said it. Ever since we saw them, actually, I saw them on television when they beat up on San Diego in Oakland, and all of a sudden this team with uh, people from, well, left field, if you will, all of a sudden came together as a cohesive group, and they're going to be tough to hit. Well, they really did not play a good football game, but they won it, and I think that's a real key, too, because they are going to play better than this as you go down the line. Here they are again, still on top of the AFC West. One game ahead of San Diego. Well, what a disappointment, too, for, for Jack Patera. He's under fire up here a little bit, and I think unrightfully so. This is only the fourth year of this franchise, and he has the best expansion, or the fifth year of the franchise. He has the best expansion record ever in the league. Young team. And he's a solid coach. Sure is. Derek Jensen in motion. Whittington. Heads for the end zone. And that will be it. And the Oakland Raiders come from well back to defeat the Seattle Seahawks 19 to 17. And the Oakland Raiders have now won six straight. Seattle has lost four straight. We'll be back. Band at one time they're pointing out blockers. Will Lewis excites the crowd as he takes it back down to the 32 yard line of the Seahawks put it into play. First and 10 Seahawks 11 29 to go in this game. They're up by four. David Craig the quarterback handoff into the line of scrimmage and flags come down like Monday wash as Tony Benjamin carried but got hung up at the line of scrimmage for not very much in the way of yardage and the flags will have to take a look and see buddy curry who's playing a lot of linebacker matter of fact he's playing ahead of tony dakin tonight the veteran out of georgia tech georgia tech where have i heard that <laughs> oh yeah d sims hey when well, you know he's talking about special team and speaking about will lewis that just goes to show you the more things that you can do the better your chances are of making this team that's right he's playing defensive back and he's running back punts Looking good. Same way with Cornell. Cornell is a valuable player on special teams, and he's shown it. Roberts' rules of order look like they're in force as the referees meet at the 30-yard line. Face mask, number 69 on the defense. Dale. Face mask violation. <laughs> They're going to replay the down again. That's the second time in a few minutes. Face mask against one team, something against the Seahawks. I thought it was motion. And so they're going to replay the down again. That's the second time we've seen it. So it'll be first and 10 still on the 32. Going along with what David said, making a football team is one of two things. You're a super athlete, you're a super catcher, you're a super runner, a great blocker, or you can do a lot of things well. And pro, pro football, the more things you can do is better. Up, we got three penalty flags come down as Craig started the play. So we had a little motion, a little offside from somewhere. So things getting a little sloppy, but you get a mixture of rookies and veterans in after only, uh, say, three weeks of camp, and you're going to get some mistakes like that. Now we'll see what this call will be. I think that's on Papa Fig, Bob Newton. Think it's on Fig? Yes. 
Pop Fink got mad the other day. Illegal motion, number 78, the offense, refused, second down. Good call, gentlemen, it was Bob Newton, who stormed out of camp, um, you know, and just last week, I think it was Sunday, he got mad at, for a few minutes at uh, Howard Mudd, and, and it's all straightened out now, and Howard said, I respect Bob, and Bob says, I respect Howard, and I was just mad, wanted to be alone, and Bob's had a tough time in rehabilitation.